What's the most ridiculous thing a teacher has ever accused you of? Mr. Langston, my high school chemistry teacher, was absolutely convinced I was sabotaging his experiments because every time I helped him, they failed. Every Friday, I was his lab assistant, helping set up the demos for the following week. It all started going downhill the day his color-changing reaction turned brown instead of purple. He accused me of messing with the chemicals. I told him I followed his instructions exactly, but he didn't want to hear it. After decades of teaching, he looked at me like I had just committed a scientific felony. The next week, I double-checked every measurement for his acid-based demo. It still failed. The solution turned cloudy instead of clear. That's when he lost it. What did you do to my chemicals? He barked in front of three other students. Nothing, I said calmly. I followed your steps exactly. From that day on, he banned me from touching any equipment and sent me to a corner of the room during labs. He even labeled me chemically incompetent. It all came to a head during our school's open house. Parents were invited to watch classroom demonstrations. Mr. Langston had a dramatic show planned, a volcanic eruption using potassium permanganate and glycerin. His usual assistant was out sick, so reluctantly, he asked me to help set things up. I followed every single instruction, measured everything twice. That evening, my parents showed up specifically to watch the big demo. Mr. Langston made a whole theatrical speech. This reaction generates so much heat, it can ignite a splint of wood. He poured the chemicals together, fully expecting fireworks. Nothing happened. Not even a sizzle. The mix just sat there, silent, sad. Parents shifted uncomfortably in their seats as Mr. Langston's face turned red, redder than any chemical reaction I'd seen. He looked straight at me in the front row. Someone, he said through clenched teeth, has deliberately sabotaged this experiment. Heads turned toward me. He continued, Eli has been interfering with my demonstrations all semester. That's when my dad, who rarely speaks in public, raised his hand. May I ask a question? He said. Mr. Langston nodded, probably expecting an apology. Instead, my dad asked, What brand of glycerin are you using? Mr. Langston blinked. Whatever the school provides, same one I've always used. My dad stood up, calmly. I work in the chemical industry, he said. That brand reformulated their glycerin last year. It now contains a stabilizer that blocks exactly the type of oxidation reaction you're trying to show. The room went dead silent. Mr. Langston stammered, that's, that can't be. I've used this demo for years. My dad walked to the front. May I? He asked, gesturing to the shelf. Mr. Langston nodded, looking a lot less certain. My dad picked up the bottle, pointed to the fine print on the label, and showed him. Right there, see? New formulation, with stabilizer. That stabilizer prevents oxidation. That's why your demo didn't work. Then he turned to the parents. The experiments didn't fail because of sabotage. They failed because the chemicals changed, and no one updated the safety sheets. Mr. Langston just stood there, frozen, mouth half open. My dad added, Honestly, if Eli had tampered with the chemicals like you said, the reactions probably would have worked. Some of the parents chuckled. The principal, who'd arrived during the demo, stepped forward. Sounds like we need to review our chemical inventory, she said firmly. Mr. Langston didn't make eye contact with me for the rest of the semester. 